So shalom, shalom church, shalom. shalom. Yeah, it's a good day today. It's sunny. Yeah, I know it's hot. So there's always a positive or maybe a negative sometimes. <laughs> but we've been asking for this kind of weather. But our farmers, I think they they want rain. So that is a contradiction. So today, uh, what I thought about is to remind us about what I usually call the eternity perspective. In school, we used to write essays and we used to be called uh, compare and contrast. So like um, a bit older, compare and contrast time with eternity. Mm-hmm. And some people would say maybe you cannot compare time with eternity. They are not comparable. Mm. Or somebody would say you can only contrast them eh, because of their difference. So what what is an eternity perspective? Maybe let's start with time. Time, the way we know time is the way events happen. You know, they they go like in sequence. Mm. And time uses uh, is from the same word where we get things like temporary or temporal. In fact, when you say something is temporal, it means it is of time. In French, they are called time temps, T-E-M-P, like le temps. So um, we should know about the brevity of time. Brevity of time. The time has a period, has a, a beginning and an end. So for us who live in time, currently we are creatures of time. But in the life to come, we'll be creatures of eternity. Mm-hmm. So you see, there's a, there's a contrast there. We are creatures of time. And anything which is in time, which is bound in time, is like a sphere of, of some sort. Huh? It's seen like we age. And we see those are the, are they called the pangs of time? You see, because we, we see, we grow, and we, we change. But beings which are in eternity, they don't change. They are constant. Okay? So you can't say today is so many years old, tomorrow maybe an angel is so many years old. Mm-hmm. Okay? We, sometimes we try to say, to give them that. But you see, in their perspective, they are eternal in that zone. But for us, because God brought us in time, and we became creatures of time, and he said there is a time, like the way we are reading in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, there is a time to be born and a time to die. So there's a time of this, there's a time of that. Mm. And God established seasons in time. So that like those who are in the north and the south, they have summer, they have autumn or fall, and they have winter and they have spring. So those are things which are in that sphere of time. But there's one thing that Jesus Christ came to tell us about. He came to show us it's like a glimpse of eternity. And he's, he told us certain things. He taught us certain things in our language, our language of time. Because maybe if he was to speak in the language of eternity, we would not understand. And what he said, I'll, I'll just tell you like the scripture. He said um, in Mark 8:36. He said, what will it profit a man or a person in that case if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Because when you look at it, I think people have become so preoccupied in time that they've forgotten there's an eternity that actually exists. And uh, people are for quick gratification of their desires. This is their here and down generation. Even in churches, people are being taught or the, the preaching has shifted to the here and now. How to feel good. Uh, it's about feeling good for now. How to be prosperous now. Or pastors are to prepare people for eternity. In fact, they are not so much to speak about the here and now. They are to speak about that which is to come. Because when you compare eternity with time, it's like <clears throat> asking. It's like if you are to take a drop of water from the ocean, from the Pacific Ocean, and let's say you take one drop. Every year you take a drop from the ocean and pour it somewhere. And then 
you wait until the, the whole Pacific Ocean dries up. You, you still not have dinted it. And someone else mm-hmm. said, some famous person also compared to to the sand. Huh? Sometimes it's also called the sands of time. They used to have an hourglass and they would put sand there. So I think they also talk about the sands of time. And the person used to say that if you are to take one speck from the beach, a, a speck or a grain of sand, and you count one every year, even if you, you try to finish the whole beach and you finish it, you still not have dented eternity. So eternity is vastness. So we compare the brevity or contrast the brevity of time, the shortness of life here on earth, the, the, li- the life that is contained within time, the life that is constrained by time. We, we compare it with the vastness of eternal life. So how should we prepare for that eternity? By doing everything from the perspective of eternity. It's like the way we advise children when they're in school. We tell them to work hard so that they go to university, they get a good job, or they go into business and they do well. So they prepare, so they take time to prepare for that which, according to even uh, Ecclesiastes, will pass away. It will also be vanity. We've seen people also who have invested a lot in business in this life. Okay? Like uh, some of them got the money the right way, others... Uh, through corruption. They build big buildings. Then one day, you hear they are no longer here. And they leave, according to Ecclesiastes, all the wealth that they have accumulated, they leave to another to squander. Sometimes it's to squander. Okay? Some even, uh, somebody gave me, I think it's David, about the example. There was one rich person, and they left their wealth to their son. And their son squandered 50 million, I don't know, within a week. Was it within a week? Yeah, he went to went somewhere, he gave people, you know, you'd come, you, you want... He went to the hotel. Yeah, or you come to him, maybe you need 2,000, he picks 50,000. Yeah, so, <laughs> so you see, it's like, th- this kind of wealth is also saying that it's like chasing the wind. So where should we invest? We should invest in the kingdom of God. Anything you do... For the sake of the kingdom of God. Like Jesus said, I was hungry and you gave me bread. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was in hospital, you visited me, or in prison and you came to see me. And there are two types of people. One will say, Lord, when, when did were you there and I did that? And you tell them, whenever you did it to the least of my brethren, you did it for me. And the others, the goats, as they are called, will say, Lord, we didn't see you that way. If you had come, obviously, I would, I would have treated you well. I would have taken you even, if you're hungry, I would have taken you to Hilton. Huh? They say, you know, when one of my brothers came to you, you said you have no time. You have no time for them. You see? So, whatever we do for the kingdom of God, okay, we've been told about taking care of the poor, of the needy, of widows, of orphans. Whatever you do in the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of God, will last eternity. Those who invest in shares, you know about dividends. So these are called eternal dividends. When you're investing in the kingdom of God, you, you, it's not just giving in church. Like, you know, sometimes when people talk about that, they say, now, nah, maybe the pastors want you to give. <laughs> that is part of it. But when you go out, you may not even have money. But you help somebody out there, you see somebody in need, and you tell them, Wait, wait, nafikiri, the best thing for you, ujoskia neno, because that will prepare you for eternity. Okay? Because you say, you, the, the, this is what I, I, I think I mentioned it. I did, uh, I don't know whether it was a video or something. I said, um, the greatest thing you can ever do for a human being is to lead them to Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. That one will be for eternity. That one, even when you bring one, you cause heaven to rejoice with you. The other thing we do, whatever we do, we we may become number one in school. We may accumulate the. We may be the most, the richest person in Kenya. That does not affect heaven. But whenever you do something for the kingdom of God, especially souls. Okay? In fact, the Bible says, 
He that wins souls in Daniel, I believe it's 11 or 12, is wise. Is wise. He that wins souls is wise. So what we are doing today is we are giving for the work of the kingdom and we are investing in the kingdom of God. In this case, we are investing with our tithes, with our offerings. But I would urge all of us that wherever we go, we do good. Because as we were told, he that knows he that knows what is good and does not do it, for him it is sin. The word of God says that. So when you see your brother, as uh, Simon was saying, in need and you don't help them, how do you manifest the love of God? You see? So let us manifest that love. And love is the foundation of everything, or should be the foundation of everything we do. Because love is that investment. And that is the thing we have been told that that is the only thing we should owe any other person. We should not owe other people money. Sometimes you may be in situations where we have like to borrow from fellow believers. Not to go out to the world, but fellow believers. And then they should not charge us interest. That one may be there. But we should owe everyone, even our enemies, we owe them love. Because we are to imitate God or to follow God who loved us, the world, when it was in sin and sent his only begotten son to save us. Dear friend, would you like to invite Jesus into your life? You can say with me this prayer. It's based from Romans 10, verse 9 to 10 and other verses. Say this. Let's say it together. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you are the Son of the true living God. I believe that you died on the cross to save me. I believe that you rose from the dead and went to be with the Father in heaven. And I welcome you into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. If you've said that prayer with me, Look for a Bible-believing church that is near you, and may God bless you. You can also reach us at the Facebook page, which is there at the bottom of this page. May God lead you in his paths, in his ways. May God preserve you until the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to take us to be with him forever and ever. Amen.